Good rising, brethren. This is Big Judah coming to you guys in California. Before I begin, I'm going to give all praise. It's most high, Yahweh. Acknowledgement to the earthly mother. Who is wisdom? Who is the Holy Spirit? Acknowledge it, Yahweh Shai. I pray the most high blesses this lesson this evening. Gives more not to understanding of the events of the past. In order to understand events that are currently happening on the earth, so we get a much better understanding of the things that are soon to come on the earth. Before I begin, I want to thank everyone that has been supporting me through the years and still continues to support me. I appreciate you. Most high bless you. Most high, I pray the most high gives you abundance. I pray abundance upon your lives for your prayers and all of your, your well wishes and, and everything that you've done to support me over these years. I want to say thank you to everyone. Now that we're coming to this end of this Gentile rulership, it's amazing to look back on our lives and look back on the last few years and how the Most High has gotten us to this point. Years ago, the Most High, you know, showed me that the Holy Spirit was a female, or has female principles, I should say. Um, and reading from the uh, Gospel of the Scenes uh, and things like that from Gnostic writings from years ago. But there's also been other writings that have been suppressed. Now, see, these so-called church fathers had all these other books that you have not seen. So, But they have decided they were going to be the ones, or later on, they were going to use the, the Catholic Church was going to be the ones to dictate what you couldn't see and what you couldn't see. And now, at this point, you should easily be able to understand that these people have an agenda. They've had an agenda from jump, um, and, they, and it was to disconnect us from our power. The other nations were already disconnected from our power, but the whole point was to disconnect us from our power. So the unpardonable sin is to blaspheme the Holy Spirit, correct? You read about that in Matthew 12, 31 and 32. Wherefore, I say unto you, all manner of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven unto, them, unto men, but the blasphemy against the Holy Ghost shall not be forgiven unto men. And whosoever speaketh a word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him. But whosoever speaketh against the Holy Ghost, it shall not be forgiven him, neither in, in this world, neither in the world to come. So, these people have already been disconnected. This church was set up by Satan. The Catholic Church, these Christian church, the hardest, all of them are all under the control of Satan. So his job is to disconnect as many people from the Most High. The Holy Spirit was going to be sent to bring all things into remembrance. Now, if you're blasting the Holy Spirit, you think she's going to come and bring all things into remembrance? If she's not sent to you, you're not going to be getting this information and this understanding. So it's, just, it's a blessing already that you're here and that you're open to hear this truth. Now, as I always tell people, study to show thyself approved. Don't take everything I say. Study it for yourself. Now, if you're not sure about the Holy Spirit being a female, if just look up Big Jude and Holy Spirit. I did videos where I gave you about 20 plus verses showing you that the Holy Spirit has female tendencies female characteristics, okay? Um, but the church, because they just translated it and said him, you know, the Holy Spirit, he will come and bring all things. Then all of a sudden, everyone's, uh, many people's, uh, you know, skills are going into, you know, deep, deep research just goes out the window. Oh, it says he, so therefore I'm not going to look at anything else. I'm not going to do any deep research myself. If you actually look at the word, it's like a, um, like no sex, like a neuter, no sex at all. But the church was always trying to disconnect the Israelites from their power, switches it up, and then they all teach it. But let me show you guys a little something, okay? This is from one of the books that was suppressed by the Catholic Church. I'm going to show you this part first, and I'm going to show you what it says about this, part, this particular book. If Number two, if anyone accepts the gospel... According to the Hebrews, 
There, the Savior himself says, Just now, my mother, the Holy Spirit, took me by one of my hairs and carried me up to the great mountain. You see, origin right there. Commentary, right? So, again, if anyone accepts the gospel according to the Hebrews, there the Savior himself says, Just now, my mother, the Holy Spirit, took me by one of my hairs and carried me up to the great mountain. Now, let's take a look at this book. It's called The Gospel According to the Hebrews. Not, you know, according to Paul or whatever else. You know, you're going to have other books that, see, we, all you guys get is Paul, 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 Paul. But there's going to be other books that are out there as well. There's going to be, uh, just like now we have many people bringing truth. It's not just one person bringing the truth. The Spirit manifests herself in many different ways and many different people. But see, they, they concentrate on just one person because they want to manipulate this one person, Paul's sayings, to their benefit. But there are other books that these so-called church fathers were actually reading. So check this out. The Gospel according to the Hebrews is quoted by a number of church fathers connected with the city of Alexandria. Now, if this book wasn't true or didn't have any validity to it, why would these so-called church fathers be quoting it? You see, th this is like what happens when you don't look and you don't read and you don't research. You just, they, oh, well, I guess they must have read all these books. Oh, they've only read the 66 and everything else is just blasphemy. But see, before, you know, they started to try to come into power, there were many books that were um, approved and read and things like that because our people know that the Holy Spirit manifests herself in many different ways with many different people. So again, the gospel according to the Hebrews is quoted by a number of church fathers connected with the city of Alexandria, Egypt. Clement, Origen, Didymus, the blind, and Jerome, who studied with Didymus in Alexandria. So you got all these different people quoting from this book. For this reason, scholars assume that it was used and possibly written there probably during the first half of the second century. Regrettably, the book no longer survives in contact. I'm sure it's in, it survives in contact hidden away somewhere. But we don't need the whole book right now. We're going to get it all. We're getting all the downloads from the Holy Spirit herself. She's already been, you know, giving us this information. It was been a beautiful part of this walk is the Most High will put thoughts in my mind, the Holy Spirit will bring things to my attention. And then it's, it's up to me by faith to kind of accept it. But then later on, the Most High will give me something else that will give me proof that what it is that they were showing me is correct. And that's happened many times. So again, the gospel according to the Hebrews is quoted by a number of church fathers connected with the city of Alexandria, Egypt, Clement, okay? Origen, Didymus, the blind, and Jerome, who studied with Didymus in Alexandria. For this reason, scholars assume that it was used and possibly written there, probably during the first half of the second century. Century. Regrettably, the book is no longer no longer survives and, and intact, but only in scattered references to it in these um, uh, other authors' writings. So just like they always do, they find our writings, they find our information, they destroy it, and then they give it back to us however they want to do. That's what they did when they came over here. They came over here to the Americas, burned our books, made mountains of books, burned them all. Then all of a sudden they said, oh, you know what, we, we want to... We want to come up with their history. So we're going to go through and we're going to come up with their history for them. They did that with the Irish, who we were as well. We're going to get into that some more as well. With Irish wisdom and some other information that um, the Most High is connecting. Because like I said, now you're seeing how we just connected the fact that they took our stories and concocted a fake medieval history for themselves. And you, there's no pushback coming. You know, I said, we have way too, the Most High has blessed us with way too much information, way too many, too much of primary sources for them to be able to come in here and say, well, that's wrong. Well, that's wrong. I'm like, well, you go ahead and say that. I said, because we have the, we have the sources. The Most High has given it to us, given it to us. That's why I said, thank you to everyone who's been helping me. I said, because the Most High has given us the information that we're going to need to destroy anything that these people say. And it's a beautiful position to be in knowing that the Most High is already a thousand steps ahead of these other nations. 
So, but only in scattered references to it in these authors' writings. Like I said, that's how they went ahead and destroyed our writings or hidden them. And then they were able to put themselves as the authorities and we can only get them through their interpretations, okay? Its uh, name probably derives from the circumstance that it was used principally by Jewish Christians, Israelites. In that large and thriving metropolis, it was called this by outsiders of that community, not by those who actually used it. So the gospel according to the Hebrews, who, who's, who actually has more authority? Who would actually know what should be read and what shouldn't be read? What should be accepted and should be accepted? The Israelites were the ones that would be doing that. So this would be something that the Israelites were, were accepting. So therefore, we knew, of course, that our Holy Spirit was the mother. But see, when the Gentiles get their opportunity to run things, they turn everything upside down. Now the Holy Spirit is a he. And if you say otherwise, you are a heretic. See that? The gospel according to the Hebrews was written in Greek and narrated important events of Jesus's life, including his baptism, temptation, and resurrection. It appears, however, that these stories were not simply taken over and modified from the gospels that came to be included in the New Testament. They were instead alternative forms of these traditions that had been passed along orally until the unknown author of this gospel heard them and wrote them down. Now, if they're passed down orally, who's the ones that's going to be getting those oral histories? The Israelites. That's how we used to pass things down. The Jewish emphasis uh, of the gospel are evident in a several of these surviving quotations, such as Fragment 5, which presupposes the importance of James, the brother of Jesus, the head of the Jewish Christian community in Jerusalem after Jesus' death. So I, I thought that all the Jews rejected Christ. I thought that's that's how that's how the uh, church got authority because all the Jew all of the Jews they killed Christ and they didn't accept him. But see, apparently that's not the case. This is what happens when you guys want to replace the true people. You have to come up with these broad strokes of you know of accusations, which you guys have been doing this whole time. Okay. So again, which shows the importance of James, um, the brother of Jesus, the head of the Jewish com uh, Christian community in Jerusalem after Jesus' death. Yet some of these scenes of the gospel have a Gnostic tone to them, right? See fragment one, which is quite similar to Coptic gospel of Thomas, okay, two. It may, be, uh, it may be then that this particular Jewish Christian community was more sympathetic than others to the prominent Gnostic teachers in Alexandria in the second century. In any event, the gospel uh, evidently contained a number of Jesus' ethical teachings. Okay, so why, have, why has the church ever told you this about this right here? If anyone accepts the gospel according to the Hebrews, there the Savior himself says, Just now my mother, the Holy Spirit, took me by one of my hairs and carried me up to the great mountain. But this is why your churches have hidden all this information from you, because they wanted you to go down with the ship. They wanted you to be guilty of blaspheming the Holy Spirit. See how this is all working out. And, you know, it's amazing because these people don't want. Well, if you're being called, you're going to get this. Israelites, Gentiles, some of the Gentiles, Gentiles are being called, too. You're getting your opportunity to hear this truth. You're not going to hear it from your church. How come your churches never tell you about this alternative? Tell you to study to show yourselves approved. Study to say, hey, it, well, in some older writings, it says that the Holy Spirit is a female, um, you know, as, as, the, as the mother, okay? Um, but why don't you guys go and study that out for yourselves? No, they don't do that. They just don't even give you an opportunity to even hear this information. You have to go and find it for yourself. And then you have to be led by the Holy Spirit to accept it. You see that? This is why the Most High says he hides a thing. He hides a matter. And it's up to the kings to search a matter out. So the information is out there, but you have to search for it. You have to chase after it. And the whole world is going to be telling you, no, that's not true. No, no, no. You're going to go to hell. No, no, no. Because they scare you away from the truth. Because they want you to go down with 
the ship. So I just wanted to share this with you. And, and trust me, there's more coming. There's more coming. And there's not going to be any response from anyone. These other nations are not going to touch this matter. So because you don't know what else the Most High already has in store for me to bring out. So you might go come out here and try to say something. And then the Most High is going to blast you with more information and make you look even more ridiculous than you already do. I mean, you already look pretty ridiculous as it is because we've already seen how your history is just a carbon copy of our scriptures. Just all you did was copy it, change the names up a little bit, change a couple of little things up it, and here you go, here's my history. You are not us. You have not replaced us. You will not replace us. You got your opportunity for a time to be on top, and that time is over. So now you need to go and do a little research on what blasphemy means. You know, because it says, do not blaspheme the Holy Spirit, correct? Let's get that real quick. What is what are a couple of definitions of blasphemy? The first one, the act of insulting or showing contempt or a lack of reverence for God. Okay. Now it's pretty funny how they, they want to sit here and talk about certain things. Hold on fast. Go to dictionary.com. An impious utterance or action concerning God or sacred things. You are uttering horrible things about the Holy Spirit, calling her a man. Right? Now, you are impious utterance or action concerning the Most High or sacred things. The Holy Spirit is sacred. Would it not make sense? Okay, look, if you're children and your father is away, just like he said, he turned his face away from us for a time, right? And you're home, and you know your dad's going to be home soon. Your father's going to be home soon. Who's going to be at the house waiting with, with you? You're not going to be home by yourself. The Holy Spirit is here with us. Our mother is here with us. Dad is on his way home. We made a huge mess. Our room is an absolute mess. Who's going to be the one to tell us to get ready, to get things cleaned up? The father who's away? Or the mother who's in the house? Who's, gonna, who's the one that knows what the Most High wants? Who's the one that's going to know what the Father wants, how the Father wants to see the house when he gets home? That would be the mother, would it not be? So she's the one that has been getting us ready for these times. She is the one that has been giving us knowledge, understanding of how, how we need to get ready, how we need to separate ourselves from this church from this church of Satan, separate us from society. Who's going to be the one saying, you know, when we were growing up, don't play with that boy. He's a bad influence. He's going to get you in trouble. Don't do this. Don't do that. Who is always trying to keep us on the right path? Our mother. She's always been here. Always been here, you know, protecting us, getting us ready for this grand day that is now upon us. So this is why they wanted, you know, make it seem as if we didn't have a mother. There is no mother because they don't have one. They don't have a mother to tell them how to get ready. They don't have a mother to tell them how to prepare themselves for the father's coming. That's why in Matthew, it says that when most high cracks of skies open and all the tribes of the earth are mourning, it's because they didn't have a mother to get them ready. They didn't have a, a mother to prepare them for what is to come. We do have our earthly mother, the Holy Spirit, who has been here getting us ready. That is why we are so much further ahead than all the other nations because not because we're so smart but because we have been called by our mother to get ready and get prepared for what is to come our new year begins in a couple of days the eclipse will be here before we know it a couple of weeks we'll be uh, celebrating and observing passover right and the feast of unleavened bread we have been prepared for these times. These other nations, as you can see, they have not done the homework. They have not been prepared. As much as they want to not, not listen to us, trust me, they're here listening. And if the Most High is calling you to accept this, you, you got a little bit of time to start cleaning yourselves up, chasing after the Most High, doing the, doing the homework, doing the work, doing the research, trying to get your houses in order, if you're so called to do so. And if not, live it up. You don't have much time left. Enjoy yourselves. 
So because there's big changes on the way. All praise, it's most high, Yahweh. Acknowledgement to the earthly mother. Who is wisdom? Who is the Holy Spirit? Acknowledge Yahweh Shai. Shalom.